I want to tell a series of, of stories that actually happened to me when I was deployed in the Marine Corps, and then a little bit about what it was like for me to come home. Um, growing up in Bend here and joining the service, uh, you know, being a local guy, a veteran, has been something that I've been very proud of. Um, but more specifically, uh, I think the thing that really catapulted me into the Marine Corps was the fact that um, when I was a sophomore in high school, 9-11 uh, happened. And I can remember uh, going into my morning class and the towers had already been hit, you know, because of the time difference, and uh, going home uh, over lunch and watching this on the television. And I think that's when something really stirred in my heart that I wanted to I wanted to uh, serve my country in a time of need, and I knew that there was a lot of buzz around town about what was going to be happening, and, uh, and so that's what I did. I, I ended up joining the Marine Corps, and I, I found myself in the middle of it all. So I kind of got what I asked for, and I'm patrolling literally uh, down a long alleyway in Fallujah, Iraq in 2004, happened to be the the bloodiest engagement of the entire conflict. And I've got Marines on my left and my right, and there's two trucks and they're heading uh, up this alleyway. It's probably about 300 yards long or three football fields. And the, the, the buildings are so close together that if you were to climb in one on top and, and you could jump literally from roof to roof. And that's how it was. And then there was little side alleys kind of over there by uh, Thump Coffee down a, down a side alley. And so the challenge here was that we had enemy forces that were shooting automatic weapon fire at us and trying to take out our trucks where all of our ammunition and bullets and food, our food were. And we were having to suppress that. And uh, one of the particular alleyways that we were uh, going down, they were shooting rockets at us. And a rocket actually came down the alleyway, exploded in the op opposite adjacent alley, and it came back on the wall that uh, three, uh, me and two other Marines were on, and it knocked me to the ground. And I can remember that my head hit the ground very violently, and um, there was a massive explosion around us. I actually thought I was hit. I had shrap metal in my jacket, and I checked myself, but I can still remember falling to the ground and looking over and seeing a, f a friend of mine, and half of his trigger finger was blown off, and he had a lot of blood coming from his leg region. And so my conditioning just kicked in. And before you knew it, I was providing aid to him. Uh, the Marines that were on the left and right were firing back. And uh, before I knew it, he was already loaded on the truck and moving forward and back down the alleyway. And uh, we were moving up. I was already grabbing rockets off of our truck and, and uh, more ammo and moving up to the next battle. So that was a pretty intense experience for me. Um, after that deployment, I decided to do something quite a bit more specialized. Um, so I decided to uh, go after the, the, the sniper community. And I took the indoctrination for that and had the privilege to serve with those guys. And so I wanted to share an experience with you in hopes that you could see it from my perspective. Um, this particular instance, we uh, got intelligence that there was, a, there was a big rain for a couple of days. And over there, the enemy forces will uh, bury munitions, machine guns, mortars, uh, rockets, all kinds of stuff in the dirt um, in 50-gallon uh, blue uh, barrels. And they'll put rifles in that and bury it. Sometimes when a wash comes through, it'll wash it away. So our, our mission was to keep eyes on that cache from an unoccupied house up on a hill. And it kind of sat down in a, in a wadi is what we called it but we were about 300 yards away. And so we came in the night before into this hide, we call it, and um, set up our, our, our uh, hide and started watching that cache. And you never know what to expect. You could sit out there for days and see nothing, or you could sit out there and a lot, a lot happens in a short amount of time. In this particular instance, I was coming off sleep from the morning because we sleep about two hours on, two hours off. And I got my... Uh, I got my uh, binoculars and I'm looking down there and I had to blink a couple times because I'm like, am I really seeing this? You have, to, you have to really be careful about what you do because the rules of engagement are so long. 
And so I, I noticed an individual actually taking the cache away very swiftly, looking left, looking right, grabbing the munitions, taking them away and burying them. And uh, there's no easy way to say it. Our job uh, as snipers were to locate, close with, and destroy the enemy forces. So basically, we got our team into position and we did a coordinated ambush. Um, and by that time, there was already two other uh, military age individuals there trying to take the cache away and hide it. Um, we actually uh, eliminated those individuals during that time. And uh, so, so all this stuff that I dealt with um, has been pretty difficult. And so I've had to learn how to adjust. And um, I wanna talk a little bit about what that was like for me. When you're an 18, 19 year old kid and you have all this experience and all this responsibility you kind of feel like you're 10 feet tall and bulletproof and that's just the truth. And uh, I didn't realize it was gonna be such a hard challenge coming home. I can remember that uh, I came home and a friend of mine, Cody Larwin, he actually took me out for a burger down here at uh, Red Robin um, in the Old Mill District. And we're sitting there and we're having a burger and there was a party going on in the background, which is really, uh, you know, innocent, but somebody was popping balloons and and uh, we're doing it over again. They've probably thought it was funny. You know, that's a very innocent thing. But for me, I know that I reacted in such a way that I can still remember my, the hair on the neck of my, back of my neck stood up. Um, I, bl my heart started pumping really fast. And my back kind of found the wall and I was scanning the room and I was looking for a threat that wasn't there. And it really started making me realize that I had brought some of this stuff home with me. And even Cody asked me, he said, hey, Chad, are you okay? And I said, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know, you know? So I guess really the, the, the point of my talk today, I feel is that through everything that I went through, through uh, all three deployments, everything that I dealt with, I've realized uh, that I'm learning more from my maybe mistakes and, and I call it failing forward. Uh, and it's been a pretty phenomenal experience to embrace uh, change and actually open your mind to that. And so my real passion and desire uh, with all of this is to hopefully open the, the door for uh, other veterans to come along and really share their story. And uh, I've just been absolutely blown away by the, uh, the welcome that I've gotten here and it's been absolutely incredible. Thank you very much.